‫יש לי פרשה, פרשה משפטים, ‫ואלה המשפטים אשר טסים לפניהם. ‫הוא אמר, ‫אלה הם המשפטים, ‫הם המשפטים, ‫שאתה צריך להיות על פרונט שלהם. ‫רש"י אומר, ‫כל המהור שלהם הם אלה, ‫ואני אומר, ‫אלה הם אלה, ‫פסה לבר שונים. ‫זה לא נפלא את מה שבפור. ‫הוא אמר, ‫ואלה, ואת וואו, ‫הוא מתכנס. ‫אם הוא אומר, ואלה, ‫זה אומר, ‫זה מתכנס את כל הדברים ‫לאסמי פרשה. ‫מה זה לאסמי פרשה? ‫סינא. Therefore, we come out from the Sinai, a lot of times the person goes to the shul or learns Torah, when he comes back from the shul, he wants to hear about, uh, about secrets of the Shamayim, secrets of Malachim, Kabbalah, this type of things. Now here, this Iparasha tells us, when you come from Har Sinai, what should you do? All talks about Adam Lechavero. You bury Ebed Ivri, how to deal with the Ebed Ivri, all of the point is to be Ebed about the Shbarku, how not to lie, not, uh, they will keep the Shabbat, and uh, not to steal, and uh, to don't annoy the Tomba Almana, all of the things, if you are mazik, somebody you have to pay. In other words, the expression of Harsina, a lot of times, we have illusionary, illusionary expression. The expression of Harsina is saying good morning to a neighbor. In other words, dealing with Yedush Hashem. You go someplace, you are on a trip, you do get the Shashem, the doctor says that Jews are, you know, decent people. All of these things are part of Harsina. Now, Rashi says, Asher Adasim Lifnehem, Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says to Moshe, don't think that you just give them the Torah. Torah should be Tasim Lifnehem, like Yeshua Khan Aruch. Make it like Yeshua Aruch, ready for them. In other words, you have to prepare the Halakha to know the Dinim, to explain them well. Now, Lifnehem, put in front of them. Now, from Lifnei, we learn out very important halakha. Now, take it in Rashi. Lifnei, Lifnei, Goyim. You should put your judgment to Jews that they have a judgment. They have to put Lifnei in front of the diary that they had to speak Parashah was talking about. Sifnei Israel. Ba'afiru yad ato abedin echa. Now, therefore, Torah is telling us that you are not allowed to go to Goyish court. Now, going to Goyish court, first and the most important thing is that if they judge between two Jews, Jewish court, not Alpitora, is a gazelle. The money is a gazelle. The money has to be returned back. The money is, there is no difference between getting a money through court or getting money, just grabbing money away from him. It's a gazelle. If the Torah says you don't deserve this money and the person gets the money through Goyish court, it's not much gazelle. Now, Rashi says, what about the judgment that you know both are the same? Jewish court, Betin, and Goyish court, both would be the same thing. Now it says, still, you should not go to Jewish court. Why? Because you are disgracing the name of Abadosh Baruch and you are glorifying the Abu Dazara. Because the apostle says, no, our God is not like our dear God, the ideas, and Oyvenu, our enemies play in. In other words, the beginning of Mr. Joshua, when our enemies become our judges, that is a good testimony to elude Yerachan, to elevating their God, their idea. When two Jewish people go to Goyish court and say that Torah is not good enough to judge between us, that's the greatest kilul Hashem about the Kodesh Baruch. This love is very comradic love, going to Goyish court is the Isur Gamu, and it's a disgrace in Yahudish Baruch Hu. Like Rambam says, somebody who goes to Goyish court is, is Morem Yad Beyat Mushrabenu. He's like, he's like, he's like putting his hand in the Torah of Mushrabenu. He's saying that Torah of Mushrabenu is a cluster. It's not, doesn't worth anything. You have to go to Goyish court. And some Koskim hold is even Yaharik Bal Yahabur. It's a Mechal in Hashem. It's like Abu Dazana. Because you are disgracing Hashem and going to to go in. And some say the Yahari Valya, we don't pass him like that, but the Yahari Valya, therefore a person has to do whatever that he could to stop those that are going, and Khasu Shalom himself should not go to Goyish court. When you buy a Ebed, Ebed, who is a Brit, six years should work for you, to buy Shevet on seventh, Yetzela Hopshi should go for free, freedom, for, without payment. Now, Torah is talking about Ebed Ivri. Ebed Ivri, what, what's the concept of Ebed Ivri? Now, how about we have Ebed Ivri? Everybody is asking a question. First of all, we have two ways of to get Ebed Ivri. One way is 
that he stole something, he doesn't have money to pay. Now what should we do? We should be in prison? Torah says that you have to work for the one that you stole from. Now to do that, he would learn how to de- de- behave. Now the Gemara says when a person buys the Ebed, he bought the other for himself. He has to serve him very well. He has to get to him. If he has one pillow to go to sleep, he has to give to his Ebed, not to himself. It's unbelievable. See, somebody tries teaching us, somebody steals, he does have dignity for other people. Other people are dignified for him. If he has dignity and dignified, he will not invade in their territory. He will not get their money. He will not, he would recognize. Now Torah says, Torah's punishment or education. How do we educate somebody not to be a thief? We educate him, we give him dignity, we give him power. We understand that you are not for nothing. You exist. See, the master has one pillow, he gives it to you. When we tell somebody that you are important to be content with yourself, then he understands there is gedorin, there is a regulation. It doesn't invade other people. Unfortunately, some people don't, don't get the right education, right kind of from their childhood, and they invade, they don't understand there is a territory, there is a respect. He was never respected, they were just respect other people. His 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 habits, if his things were not respected, they were doesn't respect other other territory of the of the finance. Therefore, here Torah is saying that he becomes a delivery, goes to the master, hopefully from the master learns how to get out of it. Now in the Gapoya Gapoya said, if he just came by himself, should go out by himself. Now really Gapo means Russia says Gapo means corner. Corner of his beggar. If he comes just with his beggar, then he goes. That does that mean. That means that if he comes with his just single, Odon is not allowed to give him Shifat and Ani. Now, Torah calls single Gapo. What does Gapo mean? Gapo means Rashon be Gapo be Kanfo. He comes just a corner of his begotten. Shlopo ira kemotcho yachidit betok lebusho. He cannot be good. Because he just came with his own garment. His own garment. Gapo, not the word. In the perspective of Torah, somebody single is called in his lavish, in his garment. No, why somebody single is called in his lavish, in his garment? Why? Because Torah is teaching us what's marriage about. Somebody who is in his garment means in the box. He just deals with himself. He is and his garment, what he wears, what he does, just sees himself and his garment. All of the marriage is. The person has to come out from the box, some look around somebody else, pay attention, care, relate. It's all push out of the match. That's why the hoop of the Sephardi and Christian of the Israel is a talit over Khatan with talit. Why talit? Why do we talit? Talit is a garment. Person shares a lot of things, but he doesn't like to share his garment. Garment is very personal. You say husband and wife, there's nothing personal. Everything you share together. Marriage is not just a contract. Marriage is sharing life together. Life is any aspect that comes into it. Therefore, that's a real marriage in Torah. The Torah is calling a single person with Yapo, with his garment. He comes garment, he goes. If Baal Shahu, if he has wife, his wife goes out with him. Now, the Barshim say, who brought his wife in that he should go out with him? Now the word, Torah is saying that if you buy a Ebedibri, you have to be, you have to be concerned and you are responsible for his family and children. Therefore, his wife and children also would come, would come to, to you and you have to feed them. When he's working, you have to feed the wife and children also. Again, it's a chinuch to this, this person. This person is stealing because he doesn't care for other people. Now we see the master coming and bring his wife, his children, is doing good to him. Now, all of this goodness that he gets from him, he says, oh, I came to steal from him. You came to rob him and see how much chesed, how much kindness. That's the way to educate people. Well, you know, there were a lot of times we feel education is with them. We have to attack people. We have to scream at people. No, Torah is telling us, overflow them with chesed and kindness. That you should understand the world is not just a place to cry. World, the world is a world of kindness. Especially if they get the kindness and benefit, 
and sees that the Odun, the master, cares even with four wife and children, that's a very good lesson for him. If I don't have it in Loisha, you are the Olobani Manuk. Now, if this master gives him a Shifra Kananit, we hear the Olo, and she, she gives birth to her Olo him, and she we are the law for him, Bani Banot, sons and daughters, and he gives birth to the the wife and the children would be for his master, who Yetzebegako, and he will go out by himself. In other words, Torah says that if he doesn't have a wife, don't give him Shibakinani. Why? Because Shibakinani he would be he would be, he would attach to her, and that would become his wife and to stay with him with her. Don't want that. But if he has a wife, Torah says, even though that the Jew is also to get married to Shifa Kenani, Torah here made in Mutan, that he should marry Gerushani, and then the Shifa and the children belongs to the master, not to him. That's very interesting. Why Torah is saying that? Why Torah is saying that give him a Shifa Kenani, and then the children belongs to the master, not to the heir. See, Torah goes to the depths of the psychology of a thief. Why a thief becomes a thief? Because he doesn't realize ownership. Somehow, the concept of ownership is corrupted in his mind. In philosophy, in, in psychology, whatever that is. Now, one thing, now, a lot of times to educate somebody is to make him understand the concept. Now, one thing that the person knows as a fact that belongs to him, a lot of times, you know, if somebody has crafted vision of ownership, doesn't know the house, the jewelry of somebody belongs to him. But the person understands deeply inside that the seed of a person belongs to himself. Belongs to myself. Now, Torah is telling this thing that you invade others' territory, others' ownership, you don't understand the limitation of the ownership. Your own seed would be used, for, and you don't own it. You take it away from you. He said, "What? Well, it's mine. I no. You are an invader. You are somebody like this. You don't understand the territory. Just like you came and stole, that means you say there is no ownership. Therefore, you don't understand the concept." In other words, it's very really important in psychology when we make somebody to become aware of something that it's not being taught in his mind at all. He doesn't have that window. No, we open the window in a very drastic way. He gets it. He understands it. Oh, it's like this. I never knew that. It's like this. I never knew that. In other words, Torah says that if you embarrass somebody, it's like killing somebody. Makes it open a bit. Oh, I didn't know that. I always drag it to me. I said things, you know. Uh, I felt that, you know, the words are the words. What is it? What could the world do? But there are a lot of times Torah makes a window for a person. Now, this person, it seems they doesn't get it. There is an ownership. There is a concept of ownership. They're not being waited. Now, through that, we teach. Now, if the Ebed says, that I love, I, I love my master, I love my wife and my children. I don't want to go free them. I don't know his master brings him to the judges that they sold him. and bring it to Taylor and Mezuzo to the door and Mezuzo doorpost. Why door and Mezuzo? Rashi says door and Mezuzo that they were they were witnesses. But like the Shvarah took out Amistrael from Israel, right? By them Pesach, like the Shvarah. To went through and saved them and told them, You are my event, you should be event for somebody else. Now, what does he do? He wants to buy, to become an event, he wants to buy another other for himself. Now, in front of Dilet and Yusuf, Ratsa Adonavetus, no? And the, the, the master would drill his ear, make it pierce his ears, the Marcia, with the owl, but Avod Olam, and he shall serve him. The Olam means till Yovel. Till Yovel would serve him. So what's happening here? A lot of times, Torah is teaching us very important lesson. A lot of times, you want to fix up somebody. This error has to be fixed up. What do we do? We bring it to the master home. First, the master just over, overflows him with chesed and kindness. 
then we take away his zera from him. A lot of times people move up. Some others, they find it comfortable zone because they don't want to educate themselves. They don't want to become educated. And Torah is telling us the most important point of education is the person should want it himself. If he doesn't want it, then we can't do anything about it. Now here he finds a comfortable zone and he wants to stay in that zone. But what's that zone? That zone of being comfortable with myself, with my master. I have to be achieved and I like it to be an avid, right? another other. Torah says there is something wrong with your ears. What's something wrong with yours? Why the ears is he stole? We have to punish his hand. Why do you punish his ears? Because the ears that he heard from Abdush Baruch Hu, now don't, don't steal. There's the ownership for the ears that heard on Harsina that Abdush Baruch Hu says, Abadai him, you are my, my Evid, and you shouldn't be Evid Abadi, on that ears should be, should be, should be pierced, that you should know that you are not listening properly. There's something wrong with your listen. Very important psychology comes up from here that for the growth of a child, for the growth of a person, they have to work out that he should be a good listener. If he doesn't listen to things in life, he doesn't get it, he doesn't learn, and he doesn't. Therefore, Torah is telling us this is a sort of education in ears. You have to make sure that the ears hear, you have to make sure that you could convey the messages. As long as you cannot convey the messages to your child, your wife, your co-worker, then nothing happens. Therefore, the ears, in other words, in some way, that they say that the ears are most kashuwe limb, kashuwe ever limb a person. Because it's through ears, you, in other words, how, how it's worth wants to communicate that, that's the parasha. How do you convey this? How do you communicate that? The Torah. What does Torah? Well, you have to hear, you have to listen. Therefore, somebody doesn't have the art of listening and, and hearing, that is blocking himself from the rest of the world. He becomes an avid to himself and to the rest of the world. But because it's very important to listen. The art of listening is very important. Art of listening means that when somebody comes and tells you, you could relate to his pain, you could understand what is he talking about. What is the matter that's bothering you? Sometimes you have to read along the line. Sometimes a child talks, wife talks, somebody talks. You can't, you can't express them so well. Or it's, it's ambiguous. You have to find out. That is the art of listening. Therefore, Torah is recognizing here that this person, the problem is with him, problem of listening. Therefore, therefore it pierces ears. And that means to say, you need to work on your ears and listening and you reprogram yourself, your life. This is not the way to go about it. There was the first part in the parasha talks about the Gadimri, parasha Mishpatim, because the old, most ultimate, ultimate point that we come out from our Sinai to understand our output in the world. So the, always we are unable. It doesn't matter. We can't get away from the output. Whether we are a slave of Akadosh Baruch Hu, or we are a slave of somebody else. That thing could be a theory, could be an idea, could be a person, could be money, could be wealth, arrogancy, taiva. Therefore, the first point that comes from Har Sinai, we have to remind ourselves constantly, we are able to have Hashem, we are not able for other things. If somebody, a man, sells his daughter to a slave woman, go to take a said Abadim, should not go out like they said Abadim, like they said Abadim, that they go out with the, you know, if you break one of the limbs of the Eved with all, over here, the girl with the halacha would be different. Now, everybody, the world asks the question, how does Torah let the father to sell his daughter? Right? How could, how, how, why Torah let, lets the father to sell his, his, his daughter? The world asks this question, and the world are bothered with this idea. Now, if you notice, I had a rabbi, the rabbi used to say, that Torah is the best explanation for Torah. Now, if you notice in this puzzle, the puzzle doesn't say that the father sells his daughter. The puzzle says, when a, when a person sells his daughter as a slave woman, no. Why the puzzle, if it is his daughter, who is the man? The man is the father. 
Why doesn't Torah says Bechim call Ovet Bito? Father, his daughter. Why is it Ishet Bito? Because Torah is telling us that the father never sells his daughter. Ish means here he's not the father. Who is that? He's a strange man. Now, Torah is teaching us if a man doesn't feel like a father to a daughter, it's a strange man, it's dangerous for this daughter to be with this man. It's dangerous. It's not good. The depression, the love that she needs doesn't get, or any type of abuse could happen. Yeah, but Torah is telling us that the foster home is better than his home. Her home is better than her home. Foster home is better. A lot of times we feel the home is the best place. Of course, it's the best place. We should not give it up for any reason. But still, there are some cases that Torah is recognizing that the foster home is better than home because of this problem. Now, here, a lot of times we feel nowadays who sells this stuff? Nowadays, I think this parsha is a more relevant parsha than any other parsha in this parsha. Because a lot of times, what does selling mean? Selling means when you do something for your children, the beneficiary of whatever that they are doing, doing has to be children. If the benefit comes to you or the parents, they are selling the daughter for their own benefit. That's called selling. In other words, if you do something for your daughter, that's because of your dignity, not because of the well, well-being of the daughter or whatever that's best for the daughter, she took it. My mom should marry somebody, she's good, everything's good. The only thing is not your dignity, it's not your power, it's not your honor, or they have to go to step up school, it's not your honor. And because of that, you ruin him, you know, because of that, you ruin her, you, you mess up his life or her life, because of your own covet and your own dignity. That is selling the daughter. Even I don't know. If it comes bad in the eyes of the master, that is not going to designate it for her care. Now the Torah is encouraging uh, the Adon. First of all, the strange girl in somebody's house not good. Should marry her. If the wants to marry her, that's good. If he doesn't want to marry her, should then he has to help her to get redemption. But to another stranger should not should not have the power the mukhla to sell her the bito in his betrayal to her. Okay. And if it is 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 son the adeno the designated to spread up on other like the according to the rights of the daughters has to do, to deal with her. Then I say that oh I just bought you therefore whatever that I do to is enough. Or if you if, he, if his son marries to a queen and this girl, the real deal has to be dealt properly. If he marries another one, she'era, her food, kesuta, clothing, and monata. And her marital relationship shall not be determined. Therefore, everything has to be kept for her the same thing. Im shalosh, eleluya asera. In other words, he doesn't marry her and himself and said, and the petion, these three things, he has to ask him, should God and pastor no money. They were totally saying that for a wife, the human of a wife we learn from here, shera means the food that the person has to give, clothing and marital issue. And the most important of one is the attention, marital issue that has. Marital issue doesn't mean just intimacy of relationship, it means all of the attention and affection that the husband should give. And Hakam tell us that the affection and attention of the husband is even more important than the food and clothing. Food and clothing, she could buy herself or a father could buy for her, everybody could buy. But that attention and affection, nobody could do it for her. That's the oxygen of her life that's in the hand of the husband. Mike, if somebody hits, somebody strikes the man and he dies, has to put in death, I should also, but if it didn't ambush him, uh, Hashem caused it to come to his hand, that's when Hashem caused him to come to his hand from here, we learn Hashem Baruch the Rosh says, that somebody killed somebody with the message, and uh, somebody has killed somebody with the sugar, and they had to go to a Mitra. Now, we didn't go to a Mitra, we didn't go to exile, and the other one was going to kill. The Hashem makes it to happen that they go to, a, they go to a hotel, and these two in the hotel, one, the one that they killed with sugar goes up the ladder, and the one who killed on purpose would be down of the ladder. He goes up, and the ladder falls, and he dies, the one has to die, and this one finds Edim 
there are, there are witnesses that what happened and they send it, they send him to God. should run away from the If somebody by, by, by purpose uh, comes against his friend and kills him the or more cunning, even if he goes on the Mispia, we should take it from there and should kill him. Somebody hates his father and his mother should put death. Mike, you know, the mighty person, regular person, is a punishment. But here, if somebody it's, it's his father and mother, not your mom. So from here, we learn out that there is a sakona, there is a, such a great uh, punishment for somebody injures the parents. Now, it's very important if somebody's a doctor and he has to make injury on their parents to go up or go up, even though the purpose of the question is not up, but we are afraid that he might do more. They were better not to treat. The parents, the doctor should not treat the parents if there is a question of injury. Because Maki of it, because there is a law of if it makes an injury that's more than whatever that has to be done, the punishment is death. Such a great punishment for Maki is the covered of father and mother. We go to Ebushu Mokharu, somebody steals the man and sells him, does two things, sells him and gets it, rips up your door, and the one that not your mom should be put there. When in 10 commandments last week we learned, Dot Nebu, that Dot Nebu doesn't go on the money. If all of the punishment of Ten Commandments is death, that means steal, it means child robbery, means stealing, stealing a person. In other words, that put, put, put to death, if somebody kills his father and his mother, not your mother, should be put to death. It's interesting, somebody curses somebody else, not put to death, but somebody curses his father and mother, he curses with the name of Hashem, then would put, put, put to death. Now, it's very interesting that here you see that, you see that first Torah says that somebody hits the parents, should be put to death. Then Torah talks about somebody steals the person, put to death. Then talks about curse. Why cursing parents? Why stealing a person is in between? Now, why didn't Torah talk about hitting your parents and cursing and then stealing the person? Why Torah put the stealing a person in between of hitting and cursing? Because Gaon explains that when a person steals somebody, if he steals from the parents, he would not know his parents, that he might come hit them or curse them, and he would fall to death. Now, there is a deeper meaning of understanding over here is that Torah is teaching us that somebody was, was, was driven from the parents, he doesn't recognize the parents, then he curses his own stem, his only stem. Why? Because he never recognized them. He never understood how vital they are in their life. And when you steal that from the children, that's terrible. That's very bad. The Torah is recognizing here, emphasizing very much in the relationship of the children and parents. In other words, if that relationship doesn't go well, then the child hits the parents means he doesn't recognize the source of his being. First, if a child curses his parents, means that he is not happy with himself. Why is he cursing the stem that he came from? Why? Because he's not happy with himself. No, what caused him not to be happy with himself? Because he's not in a good relationship with the parents. Because the parents are the small society that the child is in. Once he finds that society pleasant and with pleasure, then he would enjoy it. Otherwise, life is not doable for him. We feel a machine. When the people are fighting, we call each other and somebody's being spread, the even of a globe, a stone, or with a piece, and it doesn't die, it doesn't die, and if not for Mishan, he falls in the bed, him if he goes backwards outside Al Mishan on his own power, when he go the one who hit him would be would be unpunished. Rakshuk just he has to give him lost of the world, and he should give for the rapoy rape, should give him whatever that the medicine that he needs. From here, we learn out that the doctor could cure. Why do we need this Hiddush? Because one would but think that who made him sick, Hashem, let Hashem come and heal him. So I says, no, we can't let the shoot up. Somebody that, that hits his abdo is servant, or his amato is main servant, Hashem, with the rod, who met Tahadadu, and dies Tahadadu, who should take uh, revenge, for sure, he should take revenge, and he should be, he, sh- he should put. With that side, with the sword, and should be put to death. Because Abdo or Amato of Kinani, we are talking about Kinani, that they are just almost Jews. 
Ahim Yomayi. But if one day or two days the Ahmadi will survive, Lu Yogam should not be revenged because this is the problem. When people are fighting together, they're not push each other and they'll permanently raid the God. Uh, if you bury the you're not food and they eat a pregnant lady, because you are there and the blood came out, really also, and would not be danger for the mother, on the we should punish Kashir Yashadala, but Allah Yusha, whatever that the husband would put Christ for this in front of the court, they should give, but that time they should give in front of the judges. Therefore, if there's no danger for the mother, only the baby has to be paid being a son and if there is a danger for the mother, but that of every Sahanafish should give one life for the life, or eye for the eye, or teeth for the teeth, or hand for the hand, and feet for the feet, to be a tsar, tsar, burn, tahat, burn, instead of burn, and pesa, tahat, pesa, the wound, place of the wound, and bruise in the place of bruise. Of course, the Hebrew learns a lot of the music from all of the things, but basically, to I saying that, whatever that the person does to the person, we should do the same. In other words, if we cut this food, the food under the food. Now, why do you say food under the food? We don't do that. We don't cut this food. What do we do? We pay money for it. Now, why do you say, regel tacha, regel, or shen tacha, or ayin tacha, ayin? Because someone says, so someone's a millionaire. And there's an enemy, he hates him, he has eyes. So, okay, I go and I, I, I blind him, I hit him to become blind. And then I pay for it. But I said, no, don't think that this payment is enough. Real payment is I tahadai. The I should be paid. But here, Torah says that if the avad, what you pay would be good enough. But that's only what must happen. But the person cannot plan out and say, okay, Torah says I have to pay, and I pay. It doesn't matter, I pay. No, it doesn't happen like that. Torah says the real payment is I in tahadai. The eye should be paid for the eye. That's the real payment. And, uh, and that's, the, that's the point that was said. Somebody hits the, in the eyes of his servant or the eyes of his female slave, and destroyed it. Once a person destroys one of the evil, one of the limbs of the evil or maid servant, that's to send him out. Or his teeth, or teeth of Amato, appear. Uh, he knocks it down, he has to go free because of his teeth. Now, if a gorse, cow gores a man or a lady and they die, so what is talking about? Sure. Now, what happens? There are two things. What are we going to do with the cow? What are we going to do with the owner? Now, the, the cow has to be stoned. Why it has to be stoned? So, I can give him a sense, give him a sense because of how that be real. Imagine a cow kills somebody. Now, they shed the cow and they make barbecue and they eat it. Oh, people are eating and say, this is the cow that we are eating, it's the cow that killed Reuben. It's a disgracing of Reuben. Kabot HaBeriyot. This concept is called Kabot HaBeriyot. We have to respect people. We have to have dignity for each person, because each person is a Nishama. Here, if we eat the barbecue and say, oh, this is the cow that killed Reuben. It's not Kabot HaBeriyot. And his pastor is also to be eaten, who bar a shore and not be. And the owner of the shore is, is innocent. Why? Because he couldn't do anything. The cow came and killed him as long as he kept the cow in the right way. Now, if the cow is somebody that Nagahu, he goes with tomorrow from yesterday, from yesterday and two days before, who had been allowed, and they warned the owner, in other words, the cow becomes the cow that it goes for three times, becomes Hazoka. If three times they testify that it goes, British men, now if the Allah doesn't give it to him, it kills the man who already, I should have saw that, the, the sure we're going to kill him, stone, because of the car. Now, what about the owner? In this case, the owner would die, would put to death. Now, what type of death? Rashi says, Bidei Shamayi. Shammai will take care of him. This type of God of world that didn't just kill somebody if he himself kills somebody else. But if it's cow or he causes death for somebody else, that didn't would not kill him, only Shammai will take care of him. Because is that the cow would win. What? Yeah, so I, uh, the owner of the cow you're talking about, right? You're saying that Hashem is going to take care of him. Hashem takes care of the owner. owner. 
The like car order, has to be put because, to because the owner was negligent. Is that why? What? Because the owner was negligent. Yeah, because the owner was negligent. Right. Since he didn't do it himself actively, betting would not get involved. Because negligence, there are different levels. That level only happens for who will job. But Hashem says, but I love you not here in Torah, but I love you not put to death. That talks about Ashkara Pratit. Because the Torah interferes in the Berea and Hashem put him to death. Hashem doesn't let him live. There were very interesting points in Torah, you free, you see, that even though that a lot of dinim happens to Shamayim after death, but some of them are on, on earth here. He said, but I love you not. Where is the Muyumat to put to death? Who? Not the Bedin, the Yumar Rashi says, but they Shaman. There was a very interesting parashot in Torah that we should learn. And that teaches us there is Ashkoch Aparati. Akadosh Baruch is supervising the, 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 the people. And if somebody does something wrong, he gets the punishment for it. Here on earth, here, over here. Now, in Kofar Yushadalah, if they put atonement fine on it, not on video, I'm sure they should put the redemption for his soul. Jehul Asher Yushadalah, what do that put on him? Or oh, in other words, therefore, if you no, know, there are some times Torah says atonement you could put, sometimes not. And therefore, there's the atonement that they put over here, and he has to pay for it. Now, if it goes then a minor then a cotton, younger child, or or a, dot, a minor girl, that's it, that's his spot, should be done to him. If ever do that, if he's if he goes and ever slave. Uh, or Amma of the men say, Kesef Sterdi Shevev, Sterdi silver coin should be given to the master, by shore, and the shore is talking. Also, we're going to stone the shore because of the cover that we got. Now, we finish with the shore, now we're going to go to board. We give Dakish board. Now, somebody takes the board, that was the money of a person. In other words, Torah is telling us, what's the Allah here? This is coming up from our Sinai. Torah says the most important thing is that the person should not be passive. You are not allowed to damage other people. Expression of Akadosh Baruch Hu is, expression of our Sina is not to damage other people. What does it mean? You have to see another Jew say the If I mazer this person, I mazer Shamayim, I mazer Akadosh Baruch Hu. Because each person is Selim Elohim, is a God image. There was Har Sinai says that. No. Torah says, first of all, you yourself should not damage other people. Then Torah says, what about your property? Your property should not damage other people. Your cow, cow is the example. Is this principle is important. The principle is, whatever that you own should not be damaging other people. Somebody says, okay, my money is not damaging, but your act is damaging. So okay, it's my act, it's not my money. Torah says, no, there's another issue about poor. What's poor? Poor means people. If that is poor, in other words, there is a poor in the Rishul Tarabim, in the public place, and the place doesn't belong to you. It's a public place. You, you, take, it, you, take, you take it off the cover of the boat. So I didn't do it. It's not my money. Or you dig your pit in the Shudrabu. Or three as I don't cover it, we not have show much or chamor, and falls there a cow or chamor or donkey, then he's responsible and he has to pay. There are limitations that why is it, what is it few, what's not chayab, but that's the point that we are talking about. In other words, if, if a cow first falls there, he has to pay somewhere. It's Baal Habor, the Shalit, the owner of the board, Baal Habor. Torah calls him Baal Habor. Now, why Baal Habor? I'm not the owner of the board. Torah says, no, it's the result of your act to become like an owner. Therefore, that is a principle. Principle is in the society, you cannot do an act that other people would be get damaged. And I say, oh, I didn't do it, it's not mine. It's not, what do you mean it's not mine? You did the act, this act causes this damage to people. And first has to be very careful. In other words, you are dealing with the communities, with people, you go someplace, you put someplace, you eat, let's say, banana, you eat banana, and you put the, do you, you throw the pill on the floor. And it's okay, or somebody, a pregnant lady is passing by and she falls. And she has a, a hospital, she becomes paralyzed. Something happens to the baby. We are responsible. You have to understand, you should take this on support of action. It doesn't belong to me. There's nothing I no, no. Negligence is very important in Torah. has to pay the and the dead body should be for him. Now, what about 
if two cows hit each other, they both tied up. And that's the most of the Shura Asai Rata. In other words, if this Shura have this same amount of price, we make, we divide them. The Shura, dead body we divide and alive we divide. For know that you should not go. But if you know from before that the Shura not go to the Shura, from, from, from three times we know that the scores, the score goes, and if the, the, the owner was negligent and he didn't watch it, Shalim, Shalim, Shura, Taqa, Shura, whatever the other way. He has to pay for it because he was in a kitchen. They were, when he goes and kills the other one, he has to pay for it. Now, what about if somebody steals short or say, cow or sheep, he comes and he staggers him and he sells it? Now, Torah talks about like this. Torah says that if somebody is the master, he has to pay. Now we're going to learn that there are different levels of the depth of being massive and grow in the area that person is doing. Now, Torah is saying that if somebody steals, steals short or steal, he pays it. Now, what about, in other words, the trust is don't steal. When you steal, go and give it back right away. Now, not only you don't go and give it back, you slather it or you sell it. Slathering and selling becomes the second level of the degree of the Avera. You are deepening yourself in the Avera. Once a person does something wrong, the best thing is, they serve that person like this. The person says that you did it, that's it, finish. Now enjoy it, now do it. Next time, don't do it. But that's the wrong way of thinking. The right way of thinking is, I did something wrong. What does Hashem want from me? Hashem wants from me to fix it right away. Right away, if I steal something, I say, the person says, I can check it, sell it. It is. No, it doesn't matter. Next time, be very careful or give it up. But you have to tell yourself, oh, no, I did something wrong. I'm responsible for my act. I have to fix it. Now, if somebody doesn't say that and he makes the sin deeper, he sells it or he shifts it, Torah says, Bakar Shnai Isharita Hadashot, Barba, you know, he has to pay five cows for one cow and four sheep for one sheep. Torah puts a class, a fine, to educate us, to prevent us, in order to stop us from Yetzirah, because Yetzirah comes and says, you might enjoy it. Torah says, no. If you enjoy, if you deepen yourself, deeper yourself, deepen yourself in the thing that you are doing, it's a bigger avera. No, for one, for cow, you have to pay five, and for son, you have to pay four. Now, why cow five? And so on for unbelievable this sort in life. People who like to be productive in life, they will appreciate this Tassol. Tassol say, what's the difference between sheep and cow? The cow works. You could plow the land with it, you could do things with it. Therefore, when you store it, you will may battle the owner much more than sheep. Sheep doesn't work. Therefore, you have to pay the class define is one more. Because you battle him from, you battle him, you nullify him from the work that he has to do. Therefore, nullification of somebody else from the work that he is doing, that himself is aware of. For that, we give you cannot. Therefore, the cow that works, you stole it. You didn't just stole a cow, you stole the means that the owners could continue working, plowing the land with. Therefore, you're going to be getting more cannot. That's one shot. The other shot is much deeper. It's unbelievable they saw in Torah. Torah says the cow could walk by itself. Sheep, the gana of the thief, has to, has to carry it with his shoulder. There was the fact that the gana has to carry it with his shoulder, he was embarrassed. He was embarrassed. People saw that he's running with the sheep, what's happening with him in the street. And because of embarrassment, the knas is less. Torah is telling us, even the gana, that is stealing and going against our Kodesh Baruch Hu, he, he got embarrassed, Hashem goes, Hashem gives him this time. Hashem takes it easy on him. Unbelievable, yes, sir. In other words, we have to be, how careful we have to be not to embarrass somebody else. Here, the Ganna is embarrassing from whatever that he's doing, Hashem goes easier with him. Hashem says, oh, I feel bad for you. So we have to be rewarded in a way. In a way, you have to be rewarded. The Ganna, we say, the Ghana, but he has to report it in a way. If in, in the tunneling, 
while he's tunneling, he cannot would be found. Buka and he struck and dies. And no dummy. There is no dummy for him. You know, if somebody is tunneling, the house comes, and the owner comes and gets up and sees that it's coming, it shoots him and kills him. Torah says, okay. Why? Because when he comes to steal, he doesn't come only for money. He knows the owner will stand up against him. They were ready to kill him. Now Torah says, somebody comes to kill you, you kill him first. But if the sun shines on him, or not? No, what does mean sun shines on him? It's a metaphor, means that it's not, it's not it's clear that's not going to kill. Now, what is it clear that's not going to come and kill? If a son comes to steal from his father, the father, if, if, if a son would come to steal from his father, the son would kill the father. But if a father comes to steal from the son, father would not kill the son. They believe if somebody found in his tunnel, his father is coming to, 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 to steal, we know as a fact the Rahme of and the Ben, the father would not kill the son. Therefore, you are not allowed to kill the father. But if a son comes to steal from the father, Torah says the, the one could kill the son because the son could kill the father. And it's unbelievable psychology of the relationship between father and son and son the father. It's unbelievable. And everybody would realize that Torah is recognizing that, what Torah is recognizing? Recognizing that a person should not expect a child to love him the way that he loves the child. That never happens. Always, the father would love the children much more than children love the father. No, in your life, if a person's expectation is that it has to be the same, then it's not right, it's not going to happen. Person should know that always the love of the parents to children is much more than children to the parents. He must say it was better. If they found in his hand, again, the, the theft one, Mishor Hamur, from the cow and Hamur, and donkey, and say, Chaim, Shnai Mishalim, has to pay double. Therefore, here, Torah puts a class for a gun Somebody steals something, he has to pay double. Key other issue. Now Torah goes ahead and says another nitrous. And then you see somebody goes barbecue someplace, makes fire, and fire is dangerous. Now it doesn't keep the fire. Key other issue, a man. No, no, I'm sorry. Key other issue, that's talking about, uh, that's what the, the sheep. If the cattle, if the cattle of somebody, livestock of somebody, key other issue, if a man permits livestock or to, to eat from the field or kerem or one yard, the shirach and the uh, sin, whether he said to lose the beiro, his livestock, to be able to the and they graze in the field of some of yes, metav sadu, the best of his field and the best of his one yard, he has to pay. Therefore, you are not let your cow, not your sow, but what the, the cow itself or the sheep itself went to another sadu and gave get, and uh, grazed. That's also, you shall not allow you to take. Keep them. He said, the issue now Torah says about fire. When the fire comes out from the parts of Kotzin, the thorns, when the and consume them, consume the garnish and the stack of the grain, or a coma or sunning crop, or field, Shalom has to pay a mavit of era. He has to pay whatever that the fire that they Therefore, Torah in this parasha tells us how careful we have to be with the money of other people. If you are using something, not to be the negligent. Key, it's an issue. Somebody now Torah comes to talk about Shomri. If somebody gives something to somebody else to watch, what's the halal? If somebody gives somebody to uh, kiss the money or vessels to watch, we're going to have, and it was stolen from the house of the man. If he wants a ganov, he has to pay it twice. And if he doesn't find the ganov, he comes by a bider. Now, how do you know that say the truth? You are talking about Shomer Chinam. A Shomer that doesn't get paid. It's part of from Geneva. But maybe he didn't steal it. He's keeping for himself. He has to make sure he he looks like that he didn't send his son in the hood. I'll cut all of the things of the uh, pesha, the guilt, or on the cow, on the donkey, on the sheep, on the salma garment, for everything could have been that was, to, was, was lost, lost item that he says that he said outside. I don't know him to, to, to the court should come with claim of both. Actually, yeah, whatever that the judges would uh, make him guilty, he has to pay Schneider double to his friend. The first parasha is parasha of Shomer China. Now, second parasha is parasha of Shomer Sakhar. If you pay somebody to watch, Kiteh Shdeo Chamur, you give Chamur a donkey or cow or dogs or sheep or all of the animals to watch, 
and he dies, or Nishvar is broken, or Nishvar grounded with the kid as a captain, and there's no witness. There has to not do it. If Shomer Sakhar is Khadi of Kurgineva Babeda, but it's Hatur on honest. These things are honest, they will be Shibua, Shwadashem Tibesh name, him low is the intensive, and the Bala and the owners should take the Shibua and doesn't pay. Beam Ganobi Ganev, and if it was stolen, he has to pay. Him Talabi Karim, if it was uh, if it was torn to the pieces, he being the proof had to the bar and the boy doesn't pay. And that's talking about Shomer Sakhar. Now we're talking about the Shwe. Shwe happens every day life. You borrow something. Now what's your excuse for borrowing something? If somebody borrows from his friend, Nishba, it's be broken, it breaks or it dies, but Allah anymore. If the owners are not with him, he has to pay. If the Allah anymore, if the owners are there with the object, both he borrowed the owner and the object, then but the owner would watch the object, he doesn't have to pay. If Sakhi, who, if he is rented, he has to come with Sikhulu. Sakhi is like Shomer Sakhar. The Borir Torah talks about the human that the person has with the with the with this friend, as far as the Shemira goes. If you get the package to take to Israel or some place, you always tell them that I'm not taking any akhrayu. But otherwise, sometimes you might have some responsibility. The best thing is to tell them that I'm free of charge, I'm not taking any akhrayu for whatever that you are giving to me. Now Torah tells us like this. Very interesting. Somebody says, okay. I'm very careful with the money of other people. I'm very careful about act not to be mazi, not to do. But sometimes you steal somebody mentally. That's an important concept. A lot of people don't realize that. Even mental health or mentally stealing somebody else to us is just. says, if somebody comes and seduce, man seduced a Betula virgin. It's a girl, it's partial to a girl, she doesn't know anything about life, and you're a man, you're older, you know much more, and you get her into it. Don't think that, you know, you could do that. Now, there are a lot of times, I'm not damaging, I'm not doing anything, she wants it willingly, and she comes with it, but Torah says, no, you're fat he's, he's deducing, he's a shaker, you're you are tricking, tricking her. And that's not right. They were very interesting. From the monetary geneva, you are coming to mental geneva. Sometimes you play with the mental of somebody else and you steal from him. That's not right. Whenever that you are talking to somebody, you have to be very careful to say, tell him, tell him whatever that's good for him. You cannot just, just grab his mind for yourself, for your sake, making your effort, abuse him or do something that's not right. That is awareness of the Shkoyim. That is the expression of Harsina. Expression of Harsina is that the person could be careful, something that nobody knows about it. Nobody knows. Nobody on earth would know and would not be able to know. In that moment, when a person sees that HaKadosh Baruch would know about it, Hashem, Hashem sees, Hashem witness, that is the expression of Harsina. The Torah says, if somebody loses a, a man, a girl that wasn't, uh, wasn't engaged and sleeps with her, and should be forbidden to his wife, if the wife doesn't want, and it has to according to the dowry of virgins, he has to pay. Now, what does Lulisha mean? Lulisha means he stays for him as a wife for, for the rest of his life. Very interesting psychology. If you marry a girl, a lady, and marry properly, you don't want her, it doesn't go, you give her a gift. But if a person touches the Jewish girl, he has to marry her for the rest of his life. Torah is giving us such a beautiful lesson. Whether you don't think that you touch and go away. No. If you touch, you have to stay. Therefore, it's not, not, not like that, that you could play around with the Jewish girls. And you know, Torah says, Lo yere isha, it should be, you cannot divorce her. A regular wife, you could divorce. But this girl that you touched, you reduced her and touched, now what's going to happen to you? He has to stay with you all the time. You think properly and act properly. A sorcerer, sorceress has, should not be alive, not high. Now, Torah is very machmi on this type of things. Now, why they put them together, the tula and this, 
because a lot of times it's these sorcerers and this type of things, they lead the person to naif and this type of things. But from one tomb, a person goes to another tomb. So I says, Lo techaye, not very, not, that's a motuma. Lo techaye, we mark it that you should not leave. I will listen. Shochem and Mima, and somebody is with Mima, motuma to put it there. The very interesting. Talks about the two single lady, sorcery, and animal. Torah is teaching us all goes in one line. Person gets to one, goes to the other one, and the other one goes to the other one. This is the leading that happens. Then what happens to him? Then he becomes so tame that he is checked for God. The Quran should be destroyed. We'll kill Hashem and all of the Quran, everything has to be only for Hashem. We'll get Lotone. Now we're going to come to again to relationship. Now we finish the Jewish people. Now we're going to come to segments of Jewish people that these segments, all of them need people. You know, we, in other words, everybody has to be, we have to be sensitive. To some people, they have to be oversensitive because they're oversensitive. One of them is get converted Jew, Lotone, don't offend him uh, because that she's very sensitive, she's very, very sensitive, and you have to be careful. Look at her and don't press him. He can him them because you will get him very strong for you and you could understand them. Kulaman, not different segment. Widow and Yato, don't annoy him, annoy them. Him as well, they, they cry to me, Shamu wa Ishmael will listen. Do you cry? We are happy and we are angry. We are happy and we will keep them behere. We sold. We have your Nashek and Almanot. And your children, your wife should become Almanot. And your children, Yetomi. Therefore, it's very important that a person should know. The person should know that Yatom and Almanot. In other words, every family, more or less, is the Almanot for sure. Or Yatom. What's, what's Alman? Alman is somebody who loses the husband, and Yatom is somebody who does not parent. Now, everybody eventually loses the parents. Yatom means somebody who cannot, is not established in life yet, does not have a job, doesn't, doesn't get married. Once he has a job and gets married, then it's not Yatom. Alman also. My Yoshua will say that in Europe, whenever that they have to deal with the Yatom Alman, you know, the rabbi in the Shiva or rabbi in the Heder would say that I seek the Hinam. Under, under underneath of myself because it's so hard and so difficult. But anyway, you have to be extra careful and have to love, have to double how it's powerful that Hashem should guide us that we should treat them properly. Hashem would help. The person has a good intention and he wants to do good, Hashem would help also. In case of that, now what about if you lend money to your friend, the Tani Mah, the poor person with you, go to your you are not going to be a creator, creator to him. You want to ask for the money. Go to Sima Lamesha and you are not allowed to put interest on him. If you get as a security the, the garment of your friend, at Bashem, when it's some sex, to return back to him. Kiki Suto, not if you took, you took his blanket or his mattress, whatever that you took, Kisuto Laila is the rest of night. He needs it, it's a battle or it's a garment for his skin. What he's going to stay with. Well, and if he cries to me, I will listen to him, because I'm, I'm a I'm compassionate, I am, therefore I'm going to listen to him. The Torah is saying that if you lend somebody to somebody and needs, uh, is a needy person, be very careful, be sensitive with need. Now, a judge, you should not curse a judge, it's also to curse a judge, we not see, and the leader, but we should not curse. Judge and leader are in the community, they're responsible for the community. They, they do a lot of things, and people don't like it, they start cursing, and the Torah says, no, you have to understand that everybody has his own position, has to do things. Melatha, your Bikurim and Dimatha and your Truma should not delay before, before Bana, the first one of your children should give it to me. The, the, the same you should do to your cow, to your sheep. Seven days should be with the mother and the eighth day you give it to me. Now, every Korban, only eight days, okay? Pashi Godesh. And people of holy should be for me. Basar Basade, the meat in the field, Terefas, torn animal, don't eat. Like Kedash, you know, you should throw it to Kele. Now that he will here to like reward the Caleb, but because the Caleb didn't bark when the Hazai came out, then Loti saw Shemashim. You know, the word Torah says, don't accept the Shemashim. Loti saw Shemashim, not to see. You know, the word Torah says, Loti saw Shemashim. We learn from here that the Altara, Loti Kabir Shemad Shekel. Altar Shemad Khaim, Rashad Shemad. Now, why do you say Loshon Hara to the Caleb? Because the Gemara Hazal said that somebody says Loshon Hara, his law is defeated, that Caleb should bite him. Now, why Caleb? Caleb are guardians in the world. Somebody would say Rosh is invading somebody else's property. And the guardians of the world that they Caleb the stock, 
سن نه اشبار بود سنس از اشکار خواه اول اشبار بود حتی شدات خواه این راشا دون پود یور هنی دو ویکت پرسن تو بی اتخاماس تو بی ویتنس آف کرافت دو تیه دون دو افته ربیم تو دو ایویل دو تانه اری ان دون رسپان تو دی ویونس دین توت اخای ربیم ایشو تو بیان بین سوید فالو دی ربیم در جوریتی در تو تو دو جستیس به دار رو تبری بود پور پرسن دون give preference in his grievance. In other words, in the judgment, also that's a poor person, I have to, anyway, the usher has to, has to feed him, I do it. When you know, we're gonna go to another segment of the community. Another segment of the community is, when you encounter an ox of your enemy, or the Amor of Donkey, to a wandering, when you see the Amor, and the donkey of your, of your somebody you hate, Robert Sahad, lying after Masao, because that time as well, you will prevent it. I don't have to say The word Torah here is very interesting. And also here, Torah is saying that when a person sees his enemy, what should you do? Somebody you hate. Okay, you say that I don't care. I just, Torah says no. See, the hatred and the hatred that is between me, me, between you is supposed to be in your heart. The magnitude of hatred is your heart. Now, if you see his, 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 his money is being destroyed, if you see that he needs help, you see his donkey is there. Now you say, oh, Baruch Hashem, you know, he did so much to me. Now Hashem is giving it to me. I'm very happy for that. No, Hashem is justice. Don't say that. So I said, what do you plan helping? Show him the love from your heart. When you show him love from your heart, his heart also is going to change. Because the heart, two hearts, the way that one feels for the other one, ignites the other one to feel the same way. The heart to heart is like a pony and pony. Once we change our face for somebody else with the love, he would love us also. So the best treatment for your enemy and those that you don't like is to give them love. They're going to love you also. Hatred is not good. Don't have to Don't. Don't pervert the judgment of your uh, your, 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 your poor people, but they're going to army. Now, if somebody comes to a very rich person, you say it's not cover for the rich person to, to, to become guilty. What do I do? I make the poor guilty, and then I go and tell this person, please give him money. I did it like that, that shouldn't be. But don't do that. Medeva Shereda, from the world of Shereda, you get distance. Lord doesn't say, don't say Shereda. says, get distance. No. Don't become kilos. We're not a sadi rotar. An innocent and the sadi should not excuse kilos that because I'm not going to I, I, I'm not going to justify the Russia wicked one. The bribe bribe should not be taken. Bribe uh, blinds the the the, 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 the smart people, the sadi, and disturbs the world of the sadi. We get rotar to convert the Jews to oppress, and you know the nefesh the experience of a girl. Convert the Jew to get him eaten because you will get them at the time. Six years you sow, you sow the land and gather your crops, and on seventh, Tishmetash, the Tribishamid, the Ahlu, they should eat the poor people of your nation, and the rest of it eat Hayat Hasade, the beast of the field. Can you ask the young hunter should do your vanguard and your, your olive grow? Sheshadam, six days, Tasi do all of your machine, and seventh day. Tishbot, in order your nuba to rest your cow, your, your donkey, and the inafish, and should rest it when Amadha, the son of your male self, female self slave, and the and the converted Jew and the and the and the, and the foreigner, foreigner the Bahagir, Kola Shimomati, over the other two watch, the Shimon Bahim, and the name of the other god, Tulaskiru. You should not mention Lush Matisha. In other words, the name of other gods you should not say. Now, sometimes say some of the gods' ideas, but because this got destroyed. Any idea that right now you are worshiping is also for a Jew to mention the name of that idea. That's why we say Yashka, or we don't say the names. But if it got nullified, if it got in, 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 in the Sanjis, a lot of names of the streets or names of the things are the names of the ideas of the Spanish. But since it got, got bottled and gunified, we could expand. But not that. Shush, you treat regarding, uh, you should stress to our Bashana, Haya Matsot, the Bashot, you should give seven days, you should matzo, that, uh, just like Hashi, uh, that I commanded you in the time that you came out for this month of Aviv, 
that you came out of sight and should not see my hand come intended and the festival of the harvest be created the first fruits of your ancestors and the festival of the gathering the set in the in the in the going out of the year in the closing of the year when you gather all of your work from the field three three times should see all of your all of your males the face of Hashem. Notice that don't don't slather al khamis or dam zivri, rojalin, and you should not overnight keep the fat of the chagit till morning. Reshi, the earliest to create the fruits of the armata to be bring to Hashem and Jehovah. Note that Hashem should not cook a di, a kid be halav imo. That's halav be halav. The mother of the milk of smart. That's basar be halav. That you don't cook there. In all the shulach malach. Now I send the malach to Panecha. To watch you, Kaderef, and you bring your tomato that direction. Rashi says over here, this is not Torah, uh, this Mikan, it passed to the Shatin Lachto. From here, I was probably saying that you're going to do sin, you're going to do it good that way again, and I'm not going to be among you. I'm saying the man on. You should marry Pana, you should watch him, you should listen to him. Atamerbo, don't rebel against him, don't disobey him. Here is not, because it's not going to forgive him to your. Guilt, your your rebellious kishani because my name is in it. Kim Shama, if you listen to my to his voice and you do whatever that I tell you, but I have to, I will hate your enemies and I will I will torment your tormentors. When Malach rose in front of you, baby brings you to the Emory Vakti and I will and he led them to Tishtachav, don't bow down to their gods and to, don't serve them. We don't ask the Kimasa, we should not be carried to them. We should demolish them, we should to break them, the monuments. But about them, and you should serve with Hashem, Elkechem, and you should bless your bread and your body, Vahasiroti, and I will remove Mahala sickness from your meat. Toti Meshakela should not be, you should not be. Any Meshakra woman who loses her young children, the Akara, and the parents in the line, it's that the numbers of your, your days are will feel fulfilled. It's a Mati, and for fear of me, a Shalach, I will send to front of you. The Hamoti, I will confound all of the nation. It has shot out by him that you're going to come to him, and that they give all of your enemies, El Elecha. To you, or if they backward, they can run away from you, and I will send the seal of type of peace to find out around you, and I will chase out the Hiba Kenema to find out to you. You are sure I'm not going to chase out Bashanah and Mongia pen, lest TH should be the land will be desolated, but that one will be multiplied by you, they with the, the beast of the field. Little by little, I will chase them out at Ashiti till you become fruitful. When I help you and you settle all of the land, we shut out the good food, your border from Yam Suf to Yabrishim, from the wilderness in the hall, Ketan, the Gaza, give to you land, all of the settlers of the land, and I will chase them out from before you. Don't make a great covenant with the with the God, buried covenant. They should not sit in your land. The going should not sit in your land. Why? Because they cause you to sin. To, to me, he ta'avud et Elohim, because you're going to worship their God, ki elecha lemokesh, would be a trap for you. To Moshe, I told, Ale, to come to Arsina, to Hashem, you and Aharon of you, seven years of the side, and they bow down from far, and they get, Moshe comes by himself to Hashem, and they didn't come, but humbly, Allah didn't come with him. And Moshe came, and told to the nation, all of the world of Hashem, Mishpatim, and Yad Abraham, and they said, kol adem ha'am with Hashem, na'asseh, we're going to do it. And Moshe wrote all of the Vriah Hashem, but she said, Moshe wrote from here, from Breshit till Matan Torah. By Hashem, by Bokan, they got down in the morning, morning, and they made Mispeach Tachat Ha, and 12 Matseva monuments for 12 Shukti Israel. And Na'arev, the Bechorim, the first born of Israel, they brought a lot by Sbechot Rahim, Shrahim, the Hashem, Hashem, Parim, Bols, by Kach Moshe, Moshe took half of the dam and put it in the basins, and half of the dam, and he threw on the Mispeach. And he took the Sefer Abiri and read for Bersley Ha'am, and he said, what did that Hashem says? Na'asev and Ishma, we're going to do. Baikah Moshe, Moshe took the dam, and he threw it on the nation. He will need the dam Abiri, this is 
דם אב דה ברית אשר קרא את השם מלכים, על כל הדברים האלה, אני אומר, דם זה סימבולי של הקוונט, למה? כי דם סימבולי של חיים, אני אגיד את החיים שלי על הקוונט, והיה על משה, משה קיימות, פרנות על אביו, ושבעים סיבוני זכנים ישראל, ואירו די סור דגוד אבו סייב ותחת הגלוב, ואנדר הספות כמעשה לבנת הספיר. In other words, it was the bricks of the Sapir, who built the Shemayim, and then Toha la Toha. In other words, it was the essence of the Shemayim la Toha, and the Lord was full of mercy to save Lai Israel, and Tachat like God, and the list of his food was Himaseh Livnat HaSapir. Rashi says, why Livnat HaSapir bricks? Why Livnat? He had to live on up, Bishad HaShibud. All of the years of the Shibud, what was in front of the Lord was bricks. Why? Because the Hal Israel are suffering from the bricks. that the resemblance of the suffering of the Holy Spirit was in front of Hashem to come and save them. And finally Hashem came and saved them. We are slave in Israel, and to the great men of Israel, Hashem did not stretch out his hand, but he came and they saw Hashem, and they ate and they drank. In other words, they ate and they drank, but they didn't get the reverence of the Spirit, they didn't keep the reverence of Hashem, and Hashem was supposed to punish them, But Hashem didn't punish them, and they got punished later on. Because when closest to Hakadosh Baruch Hu has always has to be with reverence, we cannot be without reverence. When Hashem Moshe Kol Ali El Halal come to me, Hara, we should be there. But then I will give you, I give you two luchot of it, two tablets of the stone, the Hatorah and so that I wrote to teach them. I go Moshe Kada, I go Shabbos Shabbos, Shabbos Shabbos Seven, and Moshe went up to Harikim and all this. שבו לנו, אנדוול הזרן, עומר דזרן, משה סט, שבו לנו בזה, סידון היר, תראה, אני קמבי פיור, והנה אהרון וחור מוכרים, אהרון וחור ברדם, כי בעל דברים, הוא עבר על זה לקווסטין שהוא קם טובו. והיה על משה משה בן תודה הר, היחס לענון, ענון קבר דהר, וישכון כבוד השם, ודרסת דעוני רב הרדוש ברוך הוא על הר סיני, ויחסהו ענון, ענון קבר סיקסטייט, ויחסו El Moshe, and it called to Moshe, by Moshe on the seventh day, we took on up. In other words, that's after Matan Torah. That's after Matan Torah again. I was told to Moshe Rabbeinu, come, and I will give you the two luchot. Took them 40 days to give them Mare, Kevod Hashem, and the appearance of the glory of Hashem, Ke'esh Bukhele, like the fire that consumes Berushar on the top of the mountain, the Enei Ben Israel, the eyes of Israel. We have Moshe, we took on up, and Moshe came in the, in the midst of the Anon crowd, by Ya'al Al-Ha'ad, And he went to the mountain, Vahim Sham, and Moshe, Vahim Moshe Bahar, Moshe was in the heart, Arbaim Yom, Arbaim Laila, for the days and for the night, that Havad Shwar, who wrote the two luchot, and gave them, Havad Shwar, who gave them Shishar Sivan, Torah, Oral Torah, and for the days they went, Hashem told him, come, and I give you two luchot, after for the days, Moshe Rabbeinu would come down. Arbaim Yom, Arbaim Laila was there to get the luchot.